Which one should you use, EF Core or Dapper? Well, maybe you don't have to choose at all and you can use both of them in the same application. That's what I'm going to show you in today's video where I'm going to use both EF Core and Dapper for implementing application queries. I'm going to implement two queries in the user's feature folder. One of them is going to use EF Core and the other one is going to use Dapper. So the first one will be the get by ID query and I'm going to create a query class inside. So this will be the get user by ID query class. This query is going to use EF Core for the implementation and I'm going to create a record to represent my query object. The only argument I need for this query is the user identifier and I need to implement the iQuery interface and define what is the response type for this query. Now I don't have a response type yet, so let's create a simple record which I will call user response. It's going to have a few properties that will match what I have on the user entity and I'm going to give them a get and an init setter. So let me just copy a few properties then the next property is going to be an email. I'm also going to have a string property for a user's name and a Boolean property depicting if the user has a public profile. So now I can go ahead and return the user response as the result of the get user by ID query. The next thing I need is a respective handler for my query. So let's go ahead and create another class. Let's call this the get user by ID query handler. So this is a simple naming convention that I like to follow. And I need to implement the iQuery handler interface, specify the get user by ID query and the user response. And now I can go ahead and implement the handle method on the iQuery handler interface. I'm going to take the user response and move it into a separate file. And here I want to use EF core to implement this query. So I'm going to start off by adding the EF core NuGet package. So let me look for NED framework and I'm going to install Microsoft NED framework core and I won't be using our release candidate. I'll use the latest stable version which is 7.0.13. So with EF Core installed, I need a way to access my database context. Now I'm not going to be implementing a complete database context. I'm just going to define an interface that I'm going to expose in the application layer and let's call it the iApplication DB context. This means I'm making a trade-off and accepting a dependency on EF Core in my application layer. So we can't really call this the clean architecture because EF Core is an external dependency. However, I coined the name pragmatic clean architecture for this approach where you're using a domain centric approach but still making some practical decisions when it comes to querying the database. In this case, that means accepting EF Core as a dependency. So what I'm going to do is define a database set for my user entity and let's call this the users. And now I can inject the application database context through the constructor. So let me make a private read-only field of iApplicationDB context and let's inject this from the constructor. And now I'm ready to implement the handle method for my get user by ID query handler. So let's make this asynchronous. Let's make a variable to hold the user response and I'll write my query. This will be an asynchronous query. I'm going to access the user's database set called as no tracking. I'm going to add a where statement to filter the users based on the user ID that I get in the query. And then I need to apply a projection to return a new user response from the database. So let's assign the ID from the user entity, the email from the email value object. So I have to go through the value property and I have to take the same route for the name. And I also need to expose the has public profile for my user. And then I can say first or default async and pass it the cancellation token. So I'm accepting that the user could be null here and I'm going to do a null check. And let's say if user is null, then I need to return a failure result. So I'll say return result failure of a user response. And let's say user errors not found. And I'm going to pass it the user identifier from the query. So if the user is null, I'm going to return a respective error from my domain which I defined using a function. It takes in a user identifier and returns back a specific error. In this case, that the user was not found. If the user is not null, then I can just return the user from my handle method. It's going to be implicitly converted into a success result and whoever sent the query will receive the user back. 
So let's clean up everything I have here by moving them into separate files. I'm also going to move the iApplication DB Connect interface and I'm actually going to move it into the data folder under abstractions and update the namespace. So this is what we end up with. We have an interface representing my EF core database context. I'm only accepting the dependency on EF core, but I still have the choice of using a specific EF core provider in my infrastructure project. So I do have some flexibility, although this is a hard dependency in my application. Then in the query, I'm being practical and I'm not making any indirections. I'm using EF core directly and just writing out my query to give me back the user response as quickly as possible. So now I'm going to implement another query in my application and this one will be the get by email query and I'm going to use Dapper to implement this query so that we can see the difference between querying using EF Core and Dapper. So let's create a query class. So this will be the get user by email query. I'm going to follow the same approach as with the previous query by making this a record. The argument this time will be the email that we are trying to use to look for the user and it's going to return the same user response because I can reuse the response object. Now in this case the user response is inside of the get by ID folder and you can decide how you want to share this. I prefer just placing it in the root of the users folder so that it's accessible to both of my queries. So if I go back to the get user by email query I need to make a respective handler class. So I'll make an internal sealed class and this will be the get user by email query handler. It will implement the iQuery handler interface and I'll specify the get user by email query and the user response that I'm sharing between my two queries returning a user instance back. So let's implement the missing members and how am I going to implement the handle method this time? Well, I said I'm going to use Dapper. It's a micro ORM allowing you to talk with a number of SQL databases and I can decide at a later point which specific database I want to use. So I'm going to install Dapper and let's see what else I need to implement my query. Dapper works by exposing extension methods on the IDB connection interface. So I'm going to create a new abstraction which I will call IDB connection factory and this interface will have just one method returning back an IDB connection instance and let's call this the create open connection. So this factory is going to return an open database connection and I'm going to use it inside of my get user by email query handler. So let's inject the IDB connection factory. I'm going to initialize this field from the constructor and in the handle method, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a using statement for my database connection and we're going to obtain an instance by calling the create open connection method. Then I'm going to create a variable that's going to hold the user response. I'll just call it user the same as in the previous handle method and we're going to take a slightly different approach here. So I'll use the connection that I got back from my database connection factory and on it I can call the query first or default async method. I need to provide two things to this method. One will be the SQL query that I'm going to use to get back a user response and the second thing will be the arguments required to parameterize this query. So let me first write the actual query. So I'll say select and let's select the respective column. So let's say I want the user ID, the email, the user name and the user has public profile columns. I'm going to select these from a database table called users and I'm going to say where the user email is equal to some email argument that I'm passing in. So I'm looking for an exact match on the email that I'm going to get in my query and I can just pass the SQL as the first argument to this method and then I need to pass an object that's going to represent my query parameters. Now I'm passing in the email directly and this will match the email parameter that I'm defining here in my query and executing this will give me back the user response. So now I can check if the user is null, then I need to return some sort of failure result. So I'll say return result failure of user response and I don't have a respective user errors for this case. So I'm going to go ahead and create another one. So I'll say public static error and let's call this the not found by email method. It's going to accept a string representing an email and it's going to return a new error back. So let's call this the users 
not found by email error. And for the description, let's say something like this. The user with the given email was not found. So if I head back to my query handler, now I can say not found by email and pass in the email from my query object. Otherwise, I can just return a user and I finish the implementation of this handle method. So let's go ahead and clean up the design that we have here. I'll move the IDB connection factory into the data folder under the abstractions folder. And I'm going to move the query and the query handler classes into separate files. And this is what we are left with in our dapper query handler. So if I go ahead and compare this to the EF core query handler, you'll see that they are remarkably similar. The major difference is with EF core, we get strong typing and we can use link queries to write our query to the database. And EF core is going to take care of converting this into SQL. And on the other hand, if we want to use Dapper, we have to do more things manually, such as writing the query and making sure that it's selecting everything that we need from the database but actually executing the query is still very straightforward. And the other steps in the method remain the same between both EF core and the Dapper version. Now, the things that I'm not mentioning here is the setup required for working with EF core. I have to implement a database context. I need to configure it with dependency injection. I also need to apply a migration on my database. Whereas with Dapper, I just need a way to provide a connection to my database. It also assumes that the tables are already existing, but with a database connection, I'm ready to start writing queries. So Dapper definitely takes the edge when it comes to ease of use, but the downside is you got to know SQL and you have to write the SQL queries manually and maintain them through your code. Granted, you could be using functions or store procedures that a database administrator could already write in the database and just call those, but still, you have to know SQL. So EF Core abstracts this from you by letting you write link queries like this. However, this abstraction comes at the cost of slightly reduced performance. However, with the recent improvements to EF Core, this difference is becoming less and less. So this is something that you need to take into account. And my preferred way of using EF Core or Dapper is using them together. So you can decide based on the query that you're implementing, which one makes more sense. For some queries, you really need to squeeze the most performance you can get. And in that case, Dapper could be a great choice. For other queries, you just want to write your projection in a simple and strongly typed way. And E of core is an excellent option. And both of them are going to be really performant. I hope this illustrates that you can use EF Core and Dapper in the same project effectively. And if you want to learn more about a cool EF Core feature called query splitting, take a look at this video next. Thanks for watching. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, stay awesome.